Hello and welcome to another SIW episode. Six, seven, eight, somewhere around that range. We're back this time with some movies. So, by now, I think it's clear that the horror, the monthly horror movie thing's over. It's kind of sad that, uh, because I was kind of enjoying it. It was a nice gimmick. Makes me watch more stuff coming out, like, recently. So, that was kind of cool. But at the same time, most of the movies were bad. So, spending my time watching actually good movies is, feels better. (coughs) So this one doesn't actually have a theme, except um, three of the four movies were recommended by my dad, so (laughs) if you call that a theme. And two were Japanese, two were Chinese, but overall the quality is pretty good. Only one horror movie, I've been kind of broadening my uh, horizon. Not to say, like, obviously I watch stuff that's not horror, but it's been a while since I've watched some of these um, subtype movies of movies so it was pretty interesting to see so let's get into it because again all of them are fairly good one i kind of didn't like but it was pretty well received so i might be in the minority for that one first movie i've seen was 2018 summarized promise by dice let, let, let's not try to pronounce that, but it's Samurai's Promise. Um, I really enjoyed this. It's been so long since I've seen a Samurai movie. I used to, I watched a lot of them, because when I was younger, my dad would, we would watch together a lot of, um, a lot of movies, a lot of them being Asian, since that's his interest, so that's kind of where all my interest started, and... This was a pretty good movie. So in general, I think maybe a pro it's not a problem, but it's just personal taste. With Samurai movies, the plot line is usually sort of um not generic but similar. Like when I watch, even though I haven't watched a Samurai movie in forever, it still feels like this movie isn't anything new. Maybe again because it is basically a historical drama even though it might be a made-up story i'm not sure if this was based on a true story or not but um but yeah it it didn't feel like anything new if that made sense which is why i won't like why i don't have like a 10 out of 10 9 out of 10 samurai movie but to be fair i haven't watched all of the good ones like i still have to watch some of the classics and maybe my there might be exceptions for those, but I guess that would be a critique that it's not new, so... And I'm more of a person who enjoys unique plot lines, so... It's just not in personal taste, but I have to say, I thought this was a pretty good movie. Um, first off, this is the director's third work, but he has 50 cinematography creditors, credits. <laughs> So he is a primarily a cinematographer, and it really shows to this movie. It's like the movie's main attraction for me, anyways, was how it looked. It was presented beautifully, both by the cin- cinematography and the actors' performance. It was very believable for a historic piece. Again, I'm not a history major, but I could tell I was very taken in. Um, with the acting, all the mannerisms, it seemed very on point and very believable. But yeah, it was shot, there was some pretty unique shots, and I think the fight scenes really, really stood out to me. Like, there weren't, there were a couple spread out, it was more, I guess it was sort of an, it's more drama than a, than an action, but the fight scenes were all beautiful, all very, very quick paced usually under a minute when it happened but you know one hit one kill is usually how those fights turned out especially since they don't really use armor back then or at least armor against the sword effective armor is what i'm trying to say but yeah there were just beautiful scenes like a fight in the snow fight in the rain and it wasn't just like light snow light rain to like 
make it look epic. It was like heavy. It was like a snowstorm and a rain, a rainstorm, or is that just a storm? <laughs> What's it called again? I forgot. But yeah, making it hard to see. It was just, it was fantastic. So you have to give it to that. Um, yeah, for me that was the main point of it. So it just felt very polished. Even though he is technically a new director, he does have a lot of experience. So I would say while the plot isn't anything new, it was very polished. I thought the performances were good, especially the main guy. He seemed really cool and I, I like cool people. That's <laughs> that's what I know, I know cool is kind of loosely defined and it's um, subjective to the person. But if you watch my team or talk, yes stuff where he talked about some of his words he he seems really cool to me and i mean this guy seemed a different type of cool but that's what i like in a in a main character and scenically i, I mean it, it looked good i guess i mean it's not too hard to make it look good for a historic japanese drama since the resources are plenty available there but yeah solid movie good enough story again i i'm more for the unique plots but i can if you're a fan of samurai movie you would probably like this or you like really polished traditional movies like a like a movie like my very first i siw i was talking about anibaba and i gave it a lot of praise saying i really loved it and i've kind of changed because that movie is again super traditional there's i have nothing wrong with the acting or the film techniques or whatever i mean there's a couple couple little things but nothing to really hinder it but i didn't truly love it because i'm i'm looking for more more of a plot line but yeah solid movie i would give it seven six point five seven out of ten i think it's a fair one even though it's not my exactly my cup of tea i really enjoyed it for the whole thing very fun experience and it kind of makes me want to watch more samurai movie even though i just said i'm looking for something more unique it kind of scratched that itch which i kind of forgot about since it's literally been at least at least what at least a couple of years maybe like five years since i've watched a samurai movie so it was a good refresher next up we have another japanese movie 2018 the blood of wolves um, this is was a crime slash yakuza movie and again it was an itch that I haven't seen in a while. I've seen so many yakuza movies back when I was younger but it was it was so long ago I barely remember which ones I've seen. Obviously Outrage, one of the, well I don't know if it's a classic but I guess it's classic for a young person like me. The Outrage series was always fun. I knew my dad had a, a big poster on it a big poster of like i think the second movie in his room like framed so it it's it's fun and this movie was pretty great too um i think yeah i think yakuza movie could can be compared to samurai movie because it sort of all of them sort of have a similar feel like instead of being like a traditional plot line when i see a yakuza movie i kind of expect a similar like top duo or if there isn't a top it's just very like graphic and violent um most senseless violence but i mean i guess that can be said for most crime movies you usually have the same deal um if you do watch the hidarashi series in for the fourth art i did mention uh, how the protagonist akasata and oishi feel like that the typical cop pairings in crime movies and I th this really like run the bell for me because again this is the first one I've seen in a while and it's they're kind of comparable um like especially the older man he does have an oishi feel to him so if you like oishi you might you might enjoy this main character um again the plot line wasn't complex um there was an issue with the subs the subbing for this movie is pretty bad and it's not just the one i use it's a bunch i've been told that 
most of the subs are bad for this just because the people who didn't aren't great so and there isn't expected to be a good subbing for this so it might be harder for people to watch i was all right on it because i did i don't know japanese but i i can like logically tell what they are saying by what what the subs are trying to say and i do recognize i've 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 watched enough stuff to recognize common phrases that the subs miss out on, so I can piece it together, but your viewing experience might not be great if you're not used to that, so just a fair warning. And I think it didn't hinder my experience too much, but it did hurt with some of the names of the groups because there are multiple groups involved in this one and I didn't exactly know what was what because of the sub problem, but I don't think it was too bad of an experience but i really like this i think even though again i think these are similar to other yakuza movies not to say that they're all like common obviously both for samurai and yakuza movies there are like great ones like really really good ones that people like hold up high in high regards so I'm not trying to diminish that fact, but I think in general, at least to me, a lot of them feel similar. But like Samurai movies and Yakuza movies, I think I prefer the Yakuza movies, even though again, the plotline is, I mean, the plotlines can get it's a bit more unique. I think they have like a bit more creativity generally, speaking in a general sense for, yak for crime movies, because you can do cool crimes and stuff um but yeah this one was pretty good i think it was pretty graphic which i said yes these type of movies are graphic and violent but it it was a little hard for me and i i'm pretty um i'm pretty good with this stuff but you know slight spoilers i'm about to say like two scenes that i really couldn't handle um I mean, without context, they just sound nasty, but th it was it was pretty good, I guess, in the movie. Like, the opening scene, like, right at the beginning, there's, like, a close-up to, like, a pig's butt, and you see him um, defecate, <laughs> and then <laughs> someone grabs the turd. Obviously not the real turd. They probably switched it out at some point and forced someone to eat that. That was kind of hard to stomach. I wasn't expecting that. But the worst thing was um, someone got their testicle cut out and was forced to eat. And they had like a squishy popping sound in the mouth. And I just, it made me shudder. It was a little too much. Um, but in terms of um, presentation, I think it was, it wasn't as beautiful as the samurai movie but to be fair you don't really need this to be beautiful it's i think in crime movies just because of the general tone of it being sort of weird wacky violent you do want more rougher it's just cinematography so i thought it was pretty fitting good comedic scenes too um and great again great performances from the main two people I think that was the highlight for me that I liked the most. I think their chemistry and the development of especially the younger man, the rookie. Well, I don't know if he's a rookie, but he's new at least to this station. He was very interesting. And again, it was sort of obvious. I could tell what was probably going to happen as the story went on, but it was still fun to see him grow. and. Yeah, a roller coaster of emotions. There are times where I laugh, there's times where I almost teared up. But there's a really good, I think it had a really good climax. Like the last act of this movie was really intense. And when I'm at home, usually I kind of lie down and watch movies. Not, not, not in an offensive way, but you know, just relax and just because how it's set up because I usually watch through a computer. Um, but I was sitting up for like the last act of the movie. It was just packed full of excitement. You can feel all the emotions from the main character. So yeah, great movie. I think, what did I give Samurai's Promise? 6.57. I think I would give this one a solid 7. I did enjoy it a bit more 
than Samurai's Promise. Um, but again, I, I can see this being a turnoff because it is pretty graphically violent. So people might not like that. Um, and again, the subs kind of suck, so <laughs> it might not be pleasant to watch that. But if you can handle it, it is a pretty great experience. I would actually... No, I'll keep it at 7, but I can actually see some rewatchability uh, where I don't particularly see me rewatching Samurai's Promise in the future. Again, maybe it's because of tonal stuff and in general I probably like these movies better, but yeah, great movie. Next we have 2018's Shadow. Um, this is the only movie from the list that wasn't recommended to me by my dad. But I've heard very good things about it. I've seen it in um, in people's top 10 list of 2019, even though it came out in 2018. But I guess internationally, it got a release in 2019. And um, it is by a very famous director, Yimu Zane. I mean, I don't know him, but I've heard very good things about his movies. And he's held very high in regard for... I'm guessing similar movies like this. This is sort of historical fantasy action, I guess. Which is something I don't hate. When I was younger, I watched... Oh, what was it called? There's a movie I really liked that was similar to this. Or this genre. I think it was called Crouching... Let me... Wait, let me doodle it. I think it was, yeah, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, 2000s. This movie was like, I watched this like at least five times when I was younger. I don't know why, this was like my favorite movie. So it was similar to this. Another itch that I haven't, I haven't, in general, I don't think I've seen a Chinese movie in a while. So I was kind of excited and <laughs> I, spoiler, I didn't really like it too much. Um, I don't think it's bad, but maybe it's not my type of movie. <laughs> um, and I, it was probably the movie I was most excited because it's actually, like, people really liked it. But, I don't know. Like, the I think the plot was pretty boring. I, I, like, so far, I guess the th these three movies had sort of a generic plot. But this was, like, very, very predictable. Like, I called almost everything that happened. There's like one plot twist, which I thought would happen, and I'm glad it did because it was kind of good, but the rest were kind of meh. And the story itself just isn't that interesting to me. So again, this might just be a personal preference if people are into this sort of martial arts, political drama stuff, then it might be for you. Um, but there there are just positives. Like I said, I think the 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 choreography for the fight scenes were very good. I think that's a given for most Chinese action stuff. They do fight scenes very well. Um, like very artistically and almost floating. And there's like cool stuff because a lot of people fought with like this custom umbrella weapon which was kind of neat to see. <laughs> it was kind of cute. Um, and I really, I think the thing that stands out to me the most, for me anyways, was the color palette. And I thought, I think it's a positive, maybe some people might think it's a negative, but it was a very dull looking movie. Like, intentionally dull. Like, everything was grayish, blandish colors, even their dresses, I don't know, I don't know what they're called. Um, but the Chinese equivalent to, well, it's like the Chinese equivalent to kimonos and stuff. They were all very, very bland colors. It was just like, like a bland white, black, gray. And I thought it was artistically kind of fun because most people go for either, well, either they don't care about the color palette and the movie just looks whatever, or they usually go for a brighter one. So it, that was nice to see. I kind of appreciated it, but... But yeah, it just wasn't my thing. I, again, I just thought the plot was kind of boring. I can't really get into specifics, but it's just it's, it's just if in my head I'm like I don't really like this movie, so <laughs> I don't know what to say. If you are, maybe you should check it out because again, this guy is pretty pretty famous. I'm, 
I don't think I know anything. I don't think I botched anything he did. Um, but yeah, I guess this is just not my thing. But I, I have enjoyed some in the past, so maybe this like sort of brooding, dark, super serious tone of the movie isn't um, isn't what I like in um, Chinese. I don't I don't know the real term for it. <laughs> Whatever Chinese action fantasy history stuff because uh, I, I usually like a lighter tone because they usually are pretty like at least somewhat comedic or at least cheesy like there there usually is some cheese in that so it was kind of lacking that and it being super serious I just without an ounce of comedy it, it, it wasn't a myth that I liked so but if you do like serious with serious movie with pretty decent fight scenes you need fight scenes again. Umbrella weapons. Who would have thought? <laughs> then this might be for you. So I, I think I'll give this one a 6 out of 10. 5.5, 6 out of 10. I kind of feel bad about giving it a 5. I think... No, no, I'll give it a 6. I'll give it a 6. Even though it wasn't my type of movie, so I can't really rate it high. I do think it was filmed very well. Again, chore choreography. Very nice. And the, sp and the color palette it was a nice touch but other than that not my not my favorite and finally we have another chinese movie this time a horror movie called mon 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 monsters and i really really enjoyed this movie i thought it was great um again maybe a hot take because from what i've seen online people didn't like it as much as me but i was really impressed with this movie it had it had a very unique plot. Well, maybe not unique, but unique enough. Like, I haven't seen something like... I feel like I've probably heard of something like this, but I haven't seen it, at least in a while. I think there's a lot of style to the movie. It kind of even felt juvenile a bit, which is sort of an insult. Uh, I actually haven't looked at this director. So I don't know. He seems pretty... Well, I mean, maybe not new. He's been in it for a little bit, but he hasn't done too much. Um, but there's like there's like shots which are like they were kind of cool, but you more it more felt like the director thought it looked cool, if that makes any sense. Um, which is which is a positive and a negative. I I take it as a positive because it it's like a sign to me to say that the director actually like worked. There's a lot of, like, directive flair to the movie, which is what I like. What I want in a movie, generally, is a unique plotline and a lot of style, but not, like, a super artsy movie. Like, just, just leaving there, I, like, just a unique experience. And I thought this was very fun. Um, if you've watched my EB playthrough, or IB, um... I did mention that these, uh, the cast in this very much reminded me of the Misao kids, which is another playthrough I did on the channel, um, because they're horrible. <laughs> like, these are, these were terrible high school kids. Like, they were all, like, almost unbelievably horrible, which is maybe is why people don't like it that much, because they were so bad, it, and they were portrayed like, so horrible that it almost becomes unbelievable but i thought it was cute but i can see why people don't like it um again i don't want to give any anything away because this is a fun experience again an emotional roller coaster it had a very strong message of questioning you know what are what is it to be humans are we the real monsters whatever a very very easy to dissect message which i typically don't like it being so headstrong but i thought the movie was good enough to um to back it up and maybe another reason why people don't like it is because the protagonist kind of sucks i don't know i didn't really like him which means I didn't really pity him. Like, I was gonna say, oh man, this guy's gonna die by the end of this. <laughs> but, um, but I understood him enough, so. I, it was unique to me. I don't know. He was a bit annoying, but fun enough, I guess. But yeah, I really enjoyed this. Um, 
And while I said some of the scenes were like, oh, the director thinks this is cool, there were just some legitimately good scenes. I won't spoil, but the bus scene in this was excellent. Even though the last shot was kind of like, yeah, the director thinks this is cool. <laughs> when it's kind of cheesy, but... But yeah, the bus scene was pretty horrifying. And it was, I wouldn't say it was too scary, but it was good enough. <laughs> I thought the comedy was pretty on point too. Um, very good comedic value. Um, acting was fine. I mean, they were kids, right? But it was pretty believable. But I, I think I'm just impressed because in general, I don't really like Chinese movies. No, Chinese horror movies, to be specific. Not that I have the biggest sample size, so... This might be, like, the best Chinese horror movie I've watched. Like, it was very, very interesting. A, a breath of fresh air as a horror fan, because this, again, it's my primary, um... Primary interest in stories and movies is horror. If you didn't, if you couldn't tell from the rest of the channel, so... That's why I'm a bit more excited to get something fresh. And I have been watching like some classic stuff, which is good. But it's been a while since I've seen something that actually came out in recent years. Does this, did I say this one came out in 2017? Um, and yeah, I like usually a lot of the horror movies I've done that were recent were kind of bland, boring, and not exciting. This one had a lot of style. And a lot of, I had a lot of fun with it, even though, again, it felt a little juvenile and it felt like um, the character, it might have been a bit too edgy, but I think it was part of its charm. Very charming in an almost a horrific way, because some pretty horrible stuff happens in it. Um, so yeah, this was great. I would recommend this if you're into horror. Like, if I had to, I would rate this one an 8 out of 10. Um, again, maybe a hot take, but I really, really liked it. And it's it's enough for this man to go on my radar, even though he's only directed three things. But if he does direct another horror movie, then I will watch, even though his other two movies don't sound like horror movies. So, <laughs> whatever. It was great. I thought it was great chaotic goodness and the ending it was so it was such an edgy ending but a really satisfying finish slash character arc for the main character it was it was cool with the <laughs> accompanied with like a loud guitar solo i was like oh man this is so much fun so yeah um to conclude i think this mo this bundle of movies were generally all good. Um, a lot of variety. It Maybe it points out what I do like and what I don't like for the subgenres. Like, I do want to see more, um, more Yakuza movies, if I had to say, out of, like, Chinese fantasy action and samurai movies. But overall, I would probably recommend all of them, except for Shadow. <laughs> um, if they're your cup of tea. And to be fair, for Chinese horror, I haven't seen too much. Just the ones I have seen weren't too impressive. Even some of like the big contenders like Rigor Mortis wasn't too good to me. But I haven't seen um, The Eye, which is supposed to be a classic. And Dumplings? But I have seen the short movie from the original anthology but it was like good enough for them to make a feature length film of that so maybe i'll give them a shot but for now mon mon monsters you get a special stamp because you are officially for now unless i'm totally forgetting something i've seen which i don't think i am you got best chinese horror movie so give a pat on your back i guess <laughs> and yeah um Hopefully you enjoyed the session. Um, I do think, at least in the current schedule, I do want to get something out weekly for reviews. So Sunday seems to be like the nor a normal spot I upload these. So probably every Sunday I'll upload a review type video. 
and maybe something on Saturday too, just so, maybe, maybe. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching. If you're interested in more reviews, there's a playlist you can check. Um, and again, every Sunday you can come back and see what's on the chopping block. And of course there's like visual novels, AKA Hidarashi, which is gonna be there for a while or horror games you can check out. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching. I hope to see you again. <laughs> Bye.